just gracious, gracious Savior. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash don't take the hate to. Amen. God going to talk to you on a rainy day. I know you'd rather be asleep. I know how the bed feels on these kinds of days. It's, it's a special atmosphere that occurs. The thundering and the lightning. Oh, it's just a special. It's like God crafted Eden all over again. I'm going to put you in Eden so you can get some good rest. Ain't it something? Oh, it's something. But you're going to hear me preaching. And don't you go to sleep in here. If I can't sleep, you can't sleep. <laughs> Wake up, Zion! Don't take, don't take the hate to the origin of self-hatred. So God has got me on this self-hatred thing because anybody that's acting a fool has self-hatred. This is what the devil wants to implant in everyone. He whispers in voices to adults. He comes as familiar faces. He'll come in your dreams. He'll come in your sleep. He'll come in your room, he'll whisper things to you to make you feel insufficient. To make you self-loathe and feel and be down on yourself. When you're down on yourself, you begin to despise confident people. Yeah, a lot of people have a problem with me because I'm confident. It's not arrogance, I'm just confident. I know what God called me to do, and I do it. And I've done it, and I'm going to keep doing it. And I haven't stopped, and it doesn't change, and it's going to keep happening. Because I know what I'm supposed to do. Well, that makes people that keep changing what they know they're supposed to do, that makes them upset when they have to keep recreating themselves and relaunch it. And I got this new thing. And now I got this thing then a person like me is going to rub them the wrong way because I'm sticking with the main thing. Look at somebody and say, keep the main thing, the main thing. So when that self-hatred gets in you, you begin to have an issue with confident people. That's when you become gossips and tattletales. A person that's a gossip and a tattletale is harboring self-hatred. The only thing that will make you do that is if you hate yourself. You're pulling people down to feel better about yourself. That's a busybody and a tattletale. Let me make something bad about them to bring them down to where I am. Because where they are makes me feel insecure. So a gossip that's always, and you know, and you know, and you know, it's just the epitome of self-hatred. These voices speak to them and tell them that they're ugly, unattractive, dumb, not smart, rejected, not loved. Those are the voices, and they come. That's why I talked about it last week about teenage relationships, usually when you're in a teenage relationship, you get your heart broke by that person, that person is the one who will speak those negative things to you in your development. Can you imagine being 14, 15, and getting broke up on while you're developing? That's devastating. And you looking at it like, oh, that's just puppy love. There's plenty, many, plenty fish in the sea. And you be, you know, and you don't understand. That's a developmental error that doesn't just go away. That changes them in their own self-perception and makes them hate themselves. When you hate yourselves, you'll begin to hate other folks. Anyone that makes you feel bad about yourself. I preached with no slides, didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? Look at your neighbor and say, didn't he? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I <laughs> just see if you was up. The origin of self-hatred, but this is very important. So this is where this stuff comes from. You don't want to hate. And if you hate people, you hate yourself. 
If you don't love your neighbor as yourself, you don't love yourself. Can I keep preaching? I know this is good. We're going to start in the Garden of Eden again, Genesis 3 and 4. This is the origin. This is where this all started. The serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the one thing we know about this is that the devil did not come as the devil. He came as something familiar to them. Serpent was something that Adam had named. So he was familiar, right? That's where these familiar spirits come from. That's talking to you. Making you feel like you can't make it. Making you feel like you can't do it. They speak to you. And it's demons. Demons. It could be somebody talking to you and the demon can get in them just like he got in this snake and speak something that is against what God has said. Yeah. For little kids, it's little fairies come talk to them. Yeah, little images, little cartoon characters. All kinds of stuff. I had a friend of mine just, uh, 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 their ministry, uh, um, Little Light Studios. And uh, they do a lot of exposés and stuff. They're big fans of EX Ministry. I talked to, talked to him the other day, and he sent me his expose he just did on anime. And I was shocked because I don't watch it. But my God, it's worse than comic books. I used to have to cast demons out of kids that were hooked on comic books. But anime is worse. But these little characters and different things that they introduce, they come and they speak to young kids when they're down on themselves. So when that kid suffers a divorce, his parents divorce, or he feels he's inadequate or can't make it or whatever, these little characters will begin to speak to them. The devil will come in the form of these characters. And you watching you know, Marvel or Superman or something, and you're entertained by it. But a kid with that deficit that those spirits been speaking to, he wants to be in an alternate reality. So it becomes something altogether different for him. I know I'm preaching in here while it's raining. And that's why the devil did this. You know, he didn't have a, a Dragon Ball Z to speak through in the garden. And that's the worst one. That's the worst. There's nothing worse than Dragon Ball Z. That ought to be banned everywhere. I mean, got a character called Satan. Wearing the, 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 the mark of the beast on their faces. It's pos... It's pos Me and my wife were sitting there. We watched it with Jonathan. And we were sitting there. I mean, I'm just like, I can't believe this. And the devil wants to get your kids familiar with that stuff so that in the night, voices can speak to them and begin to discourage them. So when they get older, they'll self-loathe. When a person is down on themselves, they can't even receive the gospel because they feel like the gospel can't help them. Then if all you watch is cartoons that have, that, uh, you know, dissed God and made God the enemy and the devil the champion, the dragon, then something's in your heart and you can't even commune with the Holy Ghost. Can I preach in this church? Yeah. So, devil's talking in the form of something else. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So all this happened because the devil did not come. If the devil came as the devil, I don't think anybody would listen to him. So he has to, when he said you'll be knowing good and evil, what he really meant was I'm going to confuse you and make you think that good is evil and evil is good. So I got to bring evil in the picture. 
devil couldn't do nothing with just good. They had to eat so that they would have the knowledge of both. In order for the devil to find a place in the heart of mankind, he has to first cause them to have knowledge of evil. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, therefore thou shalt what? Surely die. So God told them, you're going you're gonna to die if you eat of this tree. Why? Because you'll know what evil is. And once you know what evil is, you'll, you'll turn the hourglass over on mankind. And so the devil has to first cause them to have knowledge of evil. This is where violations and different things that happen in your childhood, overexposure, you stumbled up on the wrong videotape in your uncle's collection. <laughs> Open the wrong drawer in auntie's dresser. <laughs> They yeah, should just lock all the rooms at Big Mama's house. <laughs> all the rooms. All the rooms are off limits. Y'all stay right here in the circle where I can watch y'all. <laughs> Don't venture nowhere. Because them old heathen uncles and aunts running amok at Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house was the escape room. For real. <laughs> That's a haunted house amen but yeah you saw the wrong thing you stumbled upon the wrong thing and it changed your life forever that's what the devil wants to do he wants you to have knowledge of evil once their eyes were open they saw the evil they had done they hid from God because they were ashamed of their evil deed so before that they weren't ashamed but once their eyes were open, God said, uh, uh, no, Adam said, I, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And God's next question to him was what? Who told, Who told you you was naked? <laughs> knowledge. All knowledge isn't good knowledge. Yeah. Amen. Even if it's true knowledge, it's not good knowledge. It was true that they were naked, but that wasn't good knowledge. I preach in here. Yeah, I get, y'all, I get tons of stuff, so y'all don't have to send me nothing. Please. Oh, end times. Oh, everybody got a prophecy. Everybody got a vision. Everybody know what Revelation 16 talking about, 17. Oh, they just, everybody know everything now. I mean, oh, everybody knows everything now. But nobody knew that the whole world was going to be walking around with masks on. I, I, that's my thing. I'm like, bro, I mean, I, you should have seen at least one mask on somebody. A whole crowd of a thousand. There should have been one mask, and you wrote that down, okay? Something. Everybody has afterthought. What no forethought. Now everyone's a scholar, and they can tell you what everything means. And I was telling my wife the other day, like, I, I'm tired of hearing it. Like, I, you know, I'm not changing what I do. I'm not, you know, I, I'm going to talk about some of the things that are going on, but I'm going to try to at least get us ready for Jesus to return. I feel like that's more important than me knowing which vial is poured out and which seal is torn off and which, I mean, I, I, you know, and I'm not, you know, all that stuff has its place. But if you're digesting all of that every day, you're going to have anxiety problems. Your breathing is going to change. We need to just prepare for the coming of Christ. Have somebody, oh, I dare you release an album. Nobody needs to be listening to music right now. It's time to get ready for the... Oh, I'm glad I don't live with you. Pandemic just got folk crazy. Yeah, but he said he heard the voice in the garden and he was afraid because he was naked. So all knowledge is not good knowledge. The devil wasn't able to forcibly get into Adam and Eve. He was only able to deceive them into eating of the tree 
in order to open up humanity to evil. So I feel like because they didn't have knowledge of what was evil, the devil was limited to what he could do. There's folks with knowledge of you, folks that's into that anime, that anime gets. Anime don't get me because I don't watch it. I don't have knowledge of it. I can take a Ouija board right now and throw it on the ground and slide my foot all across it and ain't nothing gonna manifest. But the right person get that board and get filled with demons. And they wonder why their life messed up. But we'll never, we'll never relate it back to what they did. So he couldn't get into them because they didn't have knowledge of it in order to, uh, he, he could only get them to eat off the tree, but that opened humanity up to knowledge of it. So now the devil has a playground. Genesis 3 and 5, for God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing what? Good and Adam's offspring were born at a time when evil was already amongst them. So Cain and Abel, when they were born, evil was there. So things were different than when Adam and Eve were created. Now the devil has some room to do something. He can actually get in somebody now because they have knowledge of evil. The devil was able to crouch at the door and lie in wait to get into his first human host. The Bible says it like this in the Amplified Version. If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, what crouches at the door? Sin crouches at whose door? Your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. So now you have to have or make sure you have the ability to fight against the sin. Because now it can overtake you. It's crouching, waiting. And that's all the devil is doing. Waiting on you to get into something. Oh, and it's not just cartoons and all of that. No, he's just waiting for you to hate somebody. He'll bring somebody in your life just to be your friend so they can unfriend you and make you upset and make you hate them to open yourself up for the enemy. Can I keep preaching in here? I know this is good. Folk looking crazy. You should see them. Get up here, Rob, and take a shot. No, I'm just kidding. Pan this audience. Abel gave an offering that was pleasing to God. We know this. Elder broke that down very well. We know this. While Cain gave, the wrong, gave with the wrong motive and spirit. Right? We know something was wrong with Cain's giving because Cain reacted when God didn't react the right way. So when he didn't get kudos from God, he felt a way. Which means that he gave it for the wrong reason in the first place. Yeah, that's folk in church doing stuff. That's why I thank God. You know, I was talking, I was doing an interview. Actually, Carmine was interviewing me and my sister about the album. And I was telling her that I felt like it was time, you know, for us to do it. Because now I feel like I have the perfect group of guys. Like, the people that are involved, I feel like we all have the same heart. Amen. Are y'all still looking at me? Like, am, I, am I right? Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I feel like I know these guys. So it was just different. But a lot of times people will be around you for the wrong reason. And your own deficit will cause you to keep people around that you shouldn't. That's self-hatred. Yeah, when you, have, when you hate yourself, you don't care who's around as long as somebody's around. Man, I just preached. I've just had too much confidence. I've always just had, I, I, I got too many whoopings for having the wrong folks around. I, I got beat for that. 
beat. So I grew up being able to just, oh, no, Doc, we can't do it. I mean, I can't. I mean, you've you been in my life for a minute. I love you, but I, I, well, hey, I can't go there with you. And I just have to separate. And the reason I do that is because I know God has somewhere for me to go. So people misinterpret that and just think I'm mean and, oh, he's so harsh and, oh, oh, oh I need support. <laughs> And that ain't even it, bro. We just going in different directions, and I just have the courage. You know, I don't have them kind of deficits where I got to have people in my life that don't belong. Yeah. Amen. I will bounce from you with the deuces. And yes, I, I'll do that. I learned that from Paul. Paul's like, oh, we ain't going to see eye to eye on this. And, all right, then. Holler at you, Barnabas. And I mean they didn't get together again. Yeah, Bible said mark those that cause divisions. See, I got a thundering applause when the men was in here by themselves. But there's some women in here that ain't ready to do that. They still inviting the wrong folks over. And their husband won't stand up to them. going to mess the kids up like that. Yeah, you let the devil in your house. He's coming straight for the kids. You're done. Your cake is baked. <laughs> in the process of time, it came to pass, the Bible said. So, well, let me go back. Abel's gift, Abel, gave, Abel gave an offering that was pleasing to God, while Cain gave with the wrong motive and spirit. His offering was not accepted. God doesn't accept our offering if it's given for the wrong motive or spirit. Amen? I just couldn't stand being at them churches where, you know, the pastor be up on the, he'd be up on the highest step, leaning over the pulpit, looking at folk and calling their name out when they give. Oh, Sister Susie, I see you, $25. She started walking. She wasn't even walking like that at first. First, she was just walking. She gave off. Ah, Sister Susie, I see you. Turn up. <laughs> so then folks start collecting during the week, saving stuff. No, I got to give that an offering. I got to give that an offering. I got to give that an offering. Well, who is the offering you give and who is it unto? Well, I mean, I would like my name called again. Because this week, I'm going to be sharp. I bought a new outfit and everything. He going to really say something this time. Is that not facts? Y'all didn't go and see y'all. Yeah. That's facts. Offering take two hours. There ain't but 40 people in here. Why is the offering so long? Because you got to describe everybody that walked by. Oh, Sister Willis, I see that new hat, girl. I see that hat. Oh, you left a tag on it. Oh, okay. Oh, you paid for that, girl. You better go. And take her 20 minutes to walk. She walking normal till he's called out the hat. Dude, just. <laughs> I want everybody to see it. So in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of, uh, brought of the fruit of the ground and offered unto the Lord. And, you know, like the elder was talking about, and it, we don't want to even get into the discussion about what the gift was and what was wrong with it and whether God didn't want fruit, whether he wanted the life. So whatever it was, I believe Cain's motive got judged here. I just believe Cain could have even gotten a good reaction from God if his motive had been different. He wasn't concerned about Abel and just gave from his heart. But he was concerned about Abel. You know how I know? Because he killed him. Death definitely tells us the rest of this story. I don't need a theologian to explain to me that Abel was the problem all along. God told him, if you do right, man, Everything will be fine. And he still went and killed Abel. Because he had a problem with Abel. 
Cain's countenance fell and he was down on himself. This posture is the birthplace of self-hatred. This is where it came from. When his countenance fell, he got down on himself. Then he started comparing himself to Abel. Then he found something wrong with Abel because Abel was doing what was right. And what was right made wrong feel worse. His own sin led to his, or led to self-hatred settling in his heart. He started, I mean, ain't nobody there but Abel and you hating on him. That means you hating on everybody. He's hating on everybody. <laughs> yeah, and that's how you get when self-hatred comes in your heart, you'll hate on everybody. Anyone that makes you feel bad about yourself. Anyone whose life you feel you can't measure up to, you'll hate them. It's so funny, when I post the messages on YouTube, I'll get 15 thumbs down within a minute of me posting it. The message is an hour. The same 15 people. It's the same 15 people. They wait until I post it to thumb it down. Yes, every time. I laugh too. Ah, I mean, it's a belly laugh. Ah, man, what y'all doing up? Why y'all up at 12 midnight waiting to see what I'm going to post just so you can thumb down and then go to sleep? But you know what? They don't go to sleep. They watch it. Because it tells me that too. You know, it's digital, so I get all the stats. Okay, so you waited up to 12 midnight to thumb it down and then watch it. At least wait till after you watch it to thumb it down. What is that? That's self-hatred. I ain't done nothing to make nobody hate me like that. You don't hate me. You don't hate this church. You don't hate this ministry. Amen. But yeah, it just, I mean, they will wait. Just it's it, like clockwork. Man, I don't have that kind of time. I just don't have, there's just too many other things I could just do at 12 midnight. 12 midnight, I want stuff running out the side of my mouth and drying up. I need my eye just crusting over at 12. I need an REM at 12. I want my pillow stuck to the side of my face <laughs> by 12. <laughs> I ain't thinking about no preacher and thumbing him down. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? He's about to upload it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? I mean, is it that bad? But his countenance fell. So he was down on himself. Once he got down on himself, he got down on Abel and everybody else that made it. Abel was making him feel bad. But instead of just doing what Abel did to feel better, he killed him. I'm just going to get rid of him. Well, Cain, is that going to make you feel better once he's dead? No. Well, then why you do it? Oh, no. They don't ever know. Hatred is hatred. When you hate, you can't think things through. If it could make sense, you wouldn't carry that kind of hatred. God talked to you, Cain, and told you what to do. God. God. There's no other after that. So if the word from the Lord can't help you, Bro, God, did God talk to Cain and told him what to, God. And it's the same in here. 
If I'm speaking, if I'm preaching, it's God. God is talking to you. And if you can't hear the word of the Lord, you're going to kill somebody. His own sin led to self-hatred settling in his heart. But unto Cain and to his offering, Genesis 4 and 5, God had no respect. And Cain was very wroth. Why are you mad and you doing wrong? Y'all know somebody like that? Dude, won't you just hit yourself? Why are you mad and it's your fault? He was mad, and the Bible said he got down on himself. Self-hatred. He began to hate himself. I know I'm preaching. Many of us are victims of hurt or abuse from others in our childhood. Amen? Yeah, somebody else did it. Somebody did it to you. And so you are a victim of hurt or abuse from others in your childhood. Our upbringing was shaped by the sins of others, just like Cain. So Cain's mom and daddy sinned, brought evil into the world. That evil got in Cain. Cain was a victim of his parents' sin. I know I'm preaching in here, and I don't care how you're looking. Somebody in here might be one of the ones thumbing it down. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Don't waste your Sunday morning. No way, you could have been sleeping with the pitter-patter of rain and thunder. And you here, being contrary and weird. You just being weird. You got in the car and drove somewhere that you don't want to be? I don't even know what that feels like. I don't like the mall, so I don't drive to the mall. That's what Amazon is for. How would I go to the mall? I don't go to malls. You won't see me in the mall. So I'm not going to get in the car and drive and just walk around. <laughs> All these stores. Mm. I'm going to shut them all down. I'm going to go talk to the mayor. We're going to shut this mall down. Shut them all down because you don't like it. Why don't you just not go? Just don't go. (laughs) Hell, those old stupid stores. Just open, open. Look at them all open. Man, if you're doing that, you're mad at something else. I promise. Our upbringing was shaped by the sins of others, just like Cain. Psalms 51 and 5, behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in the sin did my mother, in sin did my mother conceive me. So we were all born into sin, yes, right? Yes. You're born into some kind of sin, some kind of situation, something, you was exposed to something, you saw something, somebody did something they should have done, whatever the case. Yes, but you suffered that and you were a victim of that in your childhood, amen? amen. That's why we come to church to try to get this stuff fixed, yes, amen. right? So we don't walk around acting out what someone else did. Somebody put hatred in our heart for what they did and then we spend the rest of our lives acting that hatred out because our situation was less than ideal. And we acted out on folks who we believe their situation is better. I don't have no friends. You don't have no friends? I ain't got no friends. I don't don't need that. I need friends. No, you don't have friends because anytime you get one, you're threatened by them because you hate yourself. Jesus had friends. Amen. I got friends. Oh, don't nobody like me because I stand on the words. So that ain't why they don't like you. <laughs> that ain't why they don't like you. They don't like you because you're not likable. And views on the internet are not friends. You need to quit saying that. Oh, I got a lot of friends. Them folk don't know you. Walk right past you in the street. 
splash mud on you. <laughs> but we were all shaping in some kind of sin. That's how we got here. Abel and Cain were from the same parents, weren't they? So if the same parents birthed them and these parents birthed sin, that means sin affected them both. Watch this. Yet they both had the same opportunity to please God by giving him a good offering. So it don't matter where you came from. Don't matter what happened to you. Don't matter what the world did to you. It doesn't matter what your mama didn't do, what your daddy could have done. None of that matters. You still have the opportunity to please God by giving him what? A good offering. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You have a chance to change history just by doing the right thing. Excuses don't work at ABC because we got too many examples of it the other way. So you ain't gonna come in here and oh my dad and oh my mama and if he had no 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 no. We got a church full of that. Full of that. We got men in here, real men that went through everything just to be here and they're trying their best to live it the way God says live it. We got women in here, single mothers. Some of them were divorced, left to raise children on their own. And they say, you know what? I'm gonna get my children around truth and I'm gonna bring them here. No matter what, I'm gonna change history because no matter what happened to me, no matter how I grew up, no matter what I went through, I still have the opportunity to give God a good offering. Genesis 4 and 4 and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had what? Respect unto Abel and to his what? His offering. All you got to do is give God the right thing. You can change history. You can change history. Cain refused to do the right thing, which left him vulnerable for the devil to do what? Get in him. And birth what? That's how it starts. Self-hatred. That voice speaking to you. You can't do it. You're not good enough. You won't make it. You will fail. I was telling me the other day, when you, when self-hatred is birthed in you, your body tries to attack it. Your body feels you feeling that about yourself. And your body turns against itself. It's called autoimmune response. And that's where a lot of these diseases are coming from. Your body fighting against itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it even happens in little kids, babies sometimes. Babies experiencing autoimmune diseases because of the self-hatred of the parents. Because if you can't accept yourself, you can't accept your child. I know I'm preaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babies born with just all kinds of defects and deficits and different things because of you and your heart. Because it's sin. It's sin to hate yourself. You're in sin. Yeah. And we've accepted it as a culture. So you just go get as many tattoos and piercings and look as weird as you want now because it's accepted. But that's, those are all symbols of self-hatred. Skin mutilation, self-mutilation. Self-hatred. You hate yourself. It's just a sophisticated way to cut yourself. That's all it is. Burning, branding, cutting. 
You're punishing yourself because you hate what's in you. You hate what you've become. It ain't even that you really hate what, you, what you've become because you really don't even know what you've become. It's the voices you're listening to. The voices are speaking, speaking to you. And they're judging you based on what someone else did. So this left Cain vulnerable to the devil to get in him and birth self-hatred. Leading to the murder of his brother. People who hate themselves will always what? Seek to do what? Seek to destroy others. First John 3 and 12. Not as Cain who was of that what? So the Bible is telling you Cain was of the who? He was of the wicked one. That means that Cain, the devil had got in Cain. When God was talking the devil was just crouching. He hadn't sprung up yet. But by the time Cain looked at Abel one more time, the devil was able to say, you know what? Let's do this. Cain didn't consider. This has never been done before. So you don't know the consequences. And the same God that told you to do right is still God. You know the story of creation. You know how he came from nothing and made something. You know really who God really is. He made your daddy by hand. He fashioned your mama from your daddy by hand. And you're going to make a decision to kill your brother. But that's what hatred, self-hatred will do to you. You won't think it through until it's too late. So the Bible says he was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore he slew he him? Because his own works were what? Evil. And his brothers were what? Righteous. Cain had a problem with righteousness. Doing right made Cain feel more wrong. Summary! Did you say all? Oh. That was good, wasn't it? Amen. Thank God for the word. The truth, no matter what kind of upbringing you were subject to, you cannot blame anyone for the path you chose. Amen. Amen. Clap on that. Yeah. No matter what kind of upbringing you were subject to. Yeah, your parents made mistakes. All parents do. You don't judge your dad or your mom for their mistakes. What about yours? Who are you? Who are you to expect more from people than you expect from yourself? So no matter what kind of upbringing you were subject to, you can't blame anyone for the path you chose. Remember thinking about doing that stupid thing you did? Did your parents come and talk you into it when you was thinking on it? No, you thought on it. And you decided to do the fool. And you can't get mad at nobody because it was just you and the fool there. <laughs> Having a conversation. You had a conversation with the fool. Should I do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. That's the fool. <laughs> like Mr. T said, that's a stupid fool. You're just a stupid fool. Why are you asking a fool something? You think we're going to get away with it? <laughs> yeah. As you having that conversation. So, no matter what your, upbringing, what your upbringing was, you can't blame anyone. And that's the first thing self-hatred wants to do. It wants to blame somebody. When you hate yourself, see, if coulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda, coulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Bruh, you did that. You did that. 
God tried to stop you and you still did it. God sent a prophet and you did it. Just as Abel had to offer the right thing to God, so do we. We cannot use the sins of our parents, childhood trauma, abandonment, divorce, fatherlessness, or abuse as an excuse for who we are failing to become. <laughs> we must take the blame for committing the sin of Cain and not offering to God the right offering, a living sacrifice. That's the right offering, holy and acceptable unto God. That's the right offering. When self-hatred is birthed in us, we will begin to do things that are what? Displeasing to God. So when self-hatred comes, then what does it matter comes? And you don't care anymore. I might as well. Things are just bad anyway. I might as well. Just give up. Quit. Yeah. You'll start doing things displeasing to God because you hate yourself. When self-hatred is birthed in us, we will begin to do things that are displeasing to God. When we give up on ourselves and our countenance falls, we are no longer looking up to him. That was his problem. His countenance fell, and now he's down, looking down on himself. So he's no longer looking up to God. And that's how you are. When you hate yourself, you're no longer listening to God. You're no longer listening to God's minister. Now you're listening to the voices that the devil have surrounded you with. It is a sin to view ourselves in a negative light and live a shameful existence. When you look down on yourself, you see it. Because you're going against what God said about you. You're going against his plan for you. When you feel that you're not gonna prosper, you're not gonna make it, and when I say prosper, I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about money, I'm just talking about just make it in this life when you feel you can't overcome, then you're in sin. That's anti-Christ. Greater is he that is in thee than he that is what? In the world. You have to believe that. That you can overcome the world. Amen? If you don't believe that you're going to overcome this world, you're in sin. It's a sin to view yourselves that way. Sure, we all have sinned, but Jesus makes us right before God. So we must function as new creations and not malicious degenerates. person that hates themselves is a malicious degenerate. All they're doing is sitting around trying to figure out how they can take somebody else down or make somebody else look bad so they can look better. As soon as you call them, they got to gossip about somebody. Girl, did you hear the man do that too. Girl, did you hear? That's what you sound like if you're a man gossiping. <laughs> we cannot belittle our existence and deny our purpose on earth because to do so opposes the perfect will of God for us. Then, look at somebody and say, this is sin. It's sin if you belittle your existence and deny your purpose. You're in sin. We are made in his image and likeness. We are beautifully and wonderfully made. Our error and mistakes do not change his plan for us. He forgives and restores us when we fall. God's original intent for us has not changed since the very beginning. Look at somebody say, he still has intentions for you. Man, if he was going to give up on you, he would have gave up on you a long time ago. You wouldn't have been born. 
You were born with opportunity. Well, but you ain't lived my life. You don't know. The Bible says it's all common. We all feeling the same thing anyway. That means your life isn't any worse than mine, and mine is no better than yours. We've all felt the same thing because it's all common. And Jesus felt it too. That's why he came here to feel what you feel. tell you what, you keep listening to them fairies and them voices and all of that and you're going to be stuck in the same place forever. And you're going to start getting mad at the folks that's progressing. You'll be offended by them just like Cain was. God's original intent for us has nothing. Yeah, he has made a way for us to be the good creations that he made to dwell in. He does not want us to walk around with our countenance falling. His love should lift our burden and give us a reason to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How can we be exceedingly glad with God but hate the lives we are living? I'm going to say that again. How are you going to be exceedingly glad with God and hate the lives you're living? You can't. You're going to be a hypocrite. You're going to have to fake it and act like you're good with God. You can't be good with God and hate yourself. Amen. What are you praying? How can we rejoice in the Lord but hate who we are? The devil came to put hate within you so you would deny God his just due. You must repent of self-hatred and be born into the love of God. You are what God intended you to be. So accept it and live in his loving care. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 2 and 10 says, for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto what? You were created to do what's right. Man ate of the tree and brought wrong in the world, but you're still created to do what? What is right. Mankind functions off of us doing what is right. Mankind fails when we do what is wrong. That's what's wrong with our world now. What's wrong has become right. And our world is trash. Yeah. See, you watch enough of it. Watch enough of them cartoons. Read them comic books. If you watch enough of it, that negative message of God, because it's all negative toward God, that negative message will begin to sell in your heart and begin to build something up in you to where you'll begin to believe it. Subconsciously, you'll confess Christ with your mouth, but you'll believe another realm in your heart. And then all of a sudden, you're changing the way you dress and look and everything, because that's what they do. They get real weird. You know, when we was in school, it just, they just get gothic and wear the spiked hair and all the, you know, the old spikes and all that. Now they just change it to another gender. I don't like it because it reminds them of what happened to them. And that hatred inside of them has festered and turned them into something else. And they don't even have to change the outer appearance. Sometimes they can sit right up in church and their insides have changed. And their insides have changed towards you. They hate you because God is blessing you. So their job is when they leave the church, they got to take you with them. Take you where? Nowhere. Or anywhere but here. Self-hatred just grows in your heart. It'll make you kill your neighbor. Cain killed his own brother. He didn't need no instructions. It, it had never happened before. He just hated him so much. He found a way to do it. But the good news is 
We are his workmanship. That means he intentively made each and every one of us. You ever worked on something? Built something from scratch? I know Mimi. I'm going to use Mimi because she's sitting here nodding. Yeah, she built a dress from scratch. Get all the stuff, the pattern, the thread, the popcorn, whatever she get together. <laughs> Sewing machine, all of that. So she can work on it. Well, that's the nibble on because it's going to take some time if it's going to be good. She's going to make the dress for her sister's birthday gala. She want to step out in that. See the foot? So she got to make sure that the hem is right. The measurements are right. And it takes time. She's putting the time in it because she cares about what she's making. She's not making it to throw away and use as a dish rag. It wouldn't take no time to make a dish rag. She just cut off a whole piece of something. She's making something. Intentively. And that's the way God made you. There was intent behind him creating you. There was intent for him bringing you here. You're not an accident. How dare you let a fairy or a wizard speak to you and tell you that you shouldn't be here. That your life don't matter. And you are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You are capable of doing good. You're capable of doing the right thing. You're capable of making it. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at the time ye were without Christ, ye was aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope. So how are you in Christ? See, you in church, you in Christ now. Before Christ, you had no hope. Look at someone say, Christ is hope. You're in Christ now. So but before you were having no hope and without God, you were in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye whom sometimes were far off are made what? Nigh. Nigh. By your works? By your ability? By how good you are? No. By who? By what? The blood. So the blood of Christ did the job for you. You were brought nigh by the blood of Christ for he is our what peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us he is our peace he's our peace so when the stuff is speaking to you that's not him he's the peace oh I wish you listen to me today that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached what? Peace to you which were afar off, out there wilding, and to them that are not. For through him we both have access by what? One spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners. But, but what? fellow citizens with the saints and of the what? The household of God. Everyone stand to your feet. Now I don't know what the devil is telling you you are, but I just told you what God said he made. And when God made you, he made you the way he wanted you to be. And he put you in this world knowing that you were going to have tribulation. Knowing that the just are going to have to suffer. But that shouldn't change his intent for you. So you need to embrace today who you are and all self-hatred be gone. Amen. 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 Everyone bow your heads. If you're dealing with self-hatred in any kind of way, voices speaking, whatever it is, I want you to just come up here and we're just going to gather in this area for prayer. Come on. Just come on.
Come on, just, just deal with it. Somebody said something they shouldn't have said, said something, you're trying to live up to something, somebody else's expectation, you're trying to live up to someone's words, somebody is trying to destroy you, just trying to hurt you with their words, take you down because they hate themselves, and that just bothers you, it's keeping you from sleeping, keeping you, keeping anxiety in your heart. You know, you know you're not where you're supposed to be. You know you have slowed down even on your pursuit of it because of the words of someone, because of the enemy, because of something the devil is doing and saying. But today God is going to set you free from that. No more self-hatred. No more. No more self-hatred. No more. When you think of yourself, you're going to see what God sees. When you pray to him, you're going to come before him being who God made. God loves you. He's fixed all of this with his blood, with the blood of Jesus. He fixed it all. You can't mess that up. If you're in him, you can't mess. How are you going to mess the blood up? The blood sacrifice is perfect. He did exactly what needed to be done. So you can be in the right place with him. We serve the true and the living God, and his blood is real. So everyone bow your heads. We're just going to repent of sin right now, whatever it is. Stuff in your life, you know got to go. We're going to get rid of it. You say your life is messing you up. I don't want it. I'm going to silence these negative voices. I'm going to silence, silence these weird voices. I'm going to silence these folks that's weird. These weird things they're saying, the weird cartoons, the weird anime, the weird whatever I'm watching. Just the weird stuff, period. The stuff that does not agree with what God has said about me has to go from my life in the name of Jesus. Whatever disagrees with God's plan for me to be who he created me to be, I let it go right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just thank you. So just repent to the Lord right now. God told me any self-hatred requires repentance. Self-hatred requires repentance because you're in sin if you hate yourself. Self-loathing requires repentance. Shame, guilt requires repentance. Feeling down, feeling bad about who you are. You have to repent of that because that's going against God's word that is spoken over you. I don't care how you grew up. I don't care... If your mother wasn't there, father wasn't there, I don't care if you grew up in foster care. I don't care what it was. I don't care if you were molested, raped in, as, as a young child. I don't care if you were abandoned, left alone. It doesn't matter. We all get the same chance that Abel and Cain had to give the right offering. And today it's going to be a living sacrifice. So just lift your hands right now. Father God, we give you ourselves right now in the name of Jesus as a living sacrifice God, we want to see what you see when you look at us. We want to know exactly how you feel about us. So give us the passages of scripture, God. Open up your word. Let your word light up and speak to us, Father God, in our time of reading and prayer. Father God, even when we fast on Wednesday, God, help us, Lord, to see what you see. And we speak against all self-hatred right now in the name of Jesus. All self-hatred, all bad feelings about ourselves, all the rejection, all of the suicidal thoughts, all of the bad thoughts about ourselves, God. The nights we wish we were no longer here, the nights we felt that there was no reason for us to be here, the days that we just wanted to stay in bed all day because we felt, God, empty. We felt that something was wrong with us. But that's the devil. And we rebuke his voice right now. Whatever source is speaking it, we rebuke it right now. In the name of Jesus. And we'll keep our mouths off people. We won't gossip. Father God, we won't talk other people's business because we're down on ourselves. God, get all self-hatred and every attribute of it out of us, God. Change our very character. Make us upstanding in your sight. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us and everything and this is the big one come on lift your hands up everything that was intended for us God everything that was intended that self-hatred held up Father God release it right now 
in the name of Jesus. Everything that was supposed to come our way, but self-hatred held it up. Release it, God, in the name of Jesus. Release it. Release the blessings. Release the confidence. Release the love. Release the joy, the peace, everything, the healing in our bodies, Lord. All autoimmune diseases that have come because of self-hatred. We rebuke it right now and healing shall take place in our bodies. Heal us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Set us free. Give us. Give us what belongs to us. In the name of Jesus. And don't let the devil, God, take anything else. But we'll stand guard. We'll stand guard. We'll stand in the doorway. We'll block his advances. Just take all the hatred out of our hearts and make us whole. In the name that is above every name we pray. Every name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, hug somebody and say, I don't hate myself. Say, the devil can hate me all he wants, but I don't hate myself. God has shown me who I am. And because his word says that I'm wonderfully made, I believe it. I'm wonderfully made. He meticulously made me with intent from on high. I'm not an accident. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.